Hello everybody. In this video I will show you the largest bowl-shaped magnet array that I've built so far. And as you can already see, it is quite huge. It is 190 millimeters in diameter. This is my hand for comparison and I don't have small hands. And it uses 121 neodymium cube magnets. Each one is 50 millimeters in size. So as you can probably imagine, these are really, really strong suckers and they are quite difficult to handle. So this array was very difficult to build. It took me at least five hours to build one of these arrays, which I had to split up in like one hour segments because my hands would just hurt when assembling this. So the 3D printing files for everything I show in this video will be in the video description, so you can build it yourself. But I will give out a big warning. First off, this is incredibly difficult to build. If you haven't built a smaller bowl shaped array, I would not recommend that you start building this because yeah, the magnets will just attract each other when you try to insert them and it is insanely difficult to do so. If you don't have the right technique, you will fail at doing this. And also these magnets are at a size where they're already yeah, they don't break your fingers, but they can bite you really bad, as you can see, and your hands will just hurt. It's very difficult to handle, and you should at least try to build a smaller one first before you take up the challenge of one of this size. But nonetheless, if you have one of these arrays, I mean, they are incredible in strength. I have a 10 centimeter diameter neodymium disc magnet, and it is really strong, but nothing compared to this. I mean, I've handled a lot of big magnets before, but this one impressed me a lot. Just, I will, I will give you more demonstrations later, but I am recording this video with an iPhone now, and as you probably know, this phone has a lot of magnets in it. If I just come close to the array itself, from a distance of one meter away, or for the US people, like three feet, you will feel the influence of this array on the phone. So you can feel the phone getting affected by this magnet array from a distance of one meter, which is kind of insane. And what I will show you next is uh, with a magnetic viewing film, a bit of the characteristics of this array. So as you can probably see, this is a color gradient magnetic viewing film, not the standard type. So it shows the field strength in different colors. So the darker the color, the stronger the field, and the weaker the, or the weaker the field, the brighter the color. As you can probably see when I go further away, like it's not affected at all from here, then you can see the color changes and changes even more if I get closer. If I get around here on the edge, you can see this white line inertial plane or block wall, whatever you want to call it, just around here. And now we get to the more interesting part, to the center. And I've showed this in earlier videos about this um, bowl-shaped arrays, but with this large one, you can see it really well. I know there are a lot of reflections, but I try my best to show it to you when I get closer. So, let me bring in the viewer like this. You can already see this white line that is shaped like a dome. And this is the, the pole flip zone. So around here with this particular blue array, we have a strong north pole field. So all north poles are facing to the center. But inside here, underneath this white dome, we have south pole field. There are the pole flips. And if I bring in the viewer like this, you can probably see right here we have a blank spot. So here we have zero magnetic flux. This is the rest point of the whole field. So inside here we have a strong field except for this point where there is just zero magnetic flux. When I move the field viewer a bit, you can probably see better what I mean. So, yeah, this is kind of interesting. Right around here, 
a zero point manifests where we know magnetic plexus. I can show you this even better with a Gauss meter. So here I have my Gauss meter that shows the field in, um, milita in millitesla. I'll just zero it and then I will take the probe. The probe sits right on this small black spot here. And as you can see, if I come close to it, all around here, around the edge, the field is quite strong, of course. If, if I get close to the magnets, we get very high readings. But if I come close to the so-called zero point that I showed you before, where the uh, field viewer showed a blank spot, if I can get it, you will see we get a reading of around yeah, zero millitesla if I'm right on the spot, like this. So everywhere we go, we have insanely strong magnetic field, as you can see. No matter where I'm here, or even outside here, far away from the array, but just right at the spot center of it, there is zero magnetic flux. Like with any ring magnet or other radial configuration of magnets, in the center point we have no magnetic flux. And I can also show you how far the field extends. So you can see um, when I get further away from it, and get the probe closer to the camera, we still get strong readings of over one millitesla when I'm almost at the camera. And just for comparison, one millitesla is 25 times the strength of Earth's magnetic field. So it is still quite strong, even if one millitesla doesn't sound much to you. And yeah, I've also built um, another one and also I've printed a, a liner that you can place inside. It will later get glued inside here. This is just for additional strength and for safety. So none of the magnets can escape and it adds some structural yeah, strength to the whole array. And now I will show you a South Polar array that I made. This one is in red. I personally prefer a South Pole field over a North Pole field. I mean, I think the blue color is much more beautiful. Blue is my favorite color, so I like the blue color more than this red one. But the field, the South Pole field, is much more pleasant to me than the North Pole field. So when you build such arrays, you can try what configurations you like more. Like with this one, all the South Poles are facing to the center point. Of course, the field will look exactly the same under the field viewer, as you can imagine. And yeah, it has the same properties, except for being of opposite polarity. And now I will do something. I will show you how far away it can influence a compass. And for this, I have to remove the other array too because it will influence the, yeah, how the magnet would be influenced. So let me take the blue array like this. And now, as you can see from a distance here, it will get affected like crazy, even if I put it further away. But what I will do now is I will go further away so you can see the array itself in the camera frame but I will go away to a distance of around two meters and as you can see it will still get affected like crazy and the maximum distance I tried was like three meters away and it still will influence the compass when I just turn and rotate the array just to give you an idea of how far this field actually extends and how strong it is and of course these bowl shaped magnet arrays are used in the primer cubes and that's what I've built it for. I've built these two arrays for a customer. So I've also printed 
uh, holder for a motor that you can see here. So this is for the blue one. The motor will get um, inserted here and mounted on here. Um, I've showed in my last video from the primer cube build how you do everything exactly. So I won't explain everything in detail again. If you want to know more, just watch the last video. And I will show you with the red one I've printed. I've also made a cover. So it's just a cover. Um, it's also 3D printed. All the 3D printing files will be in the video description. And this is just for safety. So everything is encased. So you don't, uh, you can't accidentally touch the bowl when it's rotating. So yeah, do whatever you want with the files, build whatever you want with it. And again, I will tell you an array of this size is not for beginners to build and also not for beginners to handle. If you manage to build it, be very careful with it, especially if you have two of these, like holding them together at a distance like this is already dangerous. I can feel them getting attracted to each other and don't let them get close to each other or snap together because they have opposite polarity. I mean, they would probably self-destruct when snapping together and everything that is in between, like your fingers, yeah. It would probably yeah, smash them. I don't want to imagine what would happen. So I just want to remind you that these magnets are not toys. They are no joke. And be careful when you handle them. But anyways, I think this is it for this video. I hope I showed you everything I wanted to show you. If you have any questions, you can of course ask. And thanks for watching, have a nice day and goodbye.